Alibaba's up almost 7% on the day and over 17% during the last week. And the shares are up this week because the Chinese government has pledged their support for internet companies. However, I believe that none of this is new news and I actually think we got bad news this week. So that's what we're gonna dive into in this video. So smash that like button and subscribe if you're new. You're watching more money, let's get it. What's up guys and welcome back to the channel where the goal here is to help at least a thousand people achieve financial freedom much sooner. And let's dive right into it. So you can see here that Alibaba on the day is actually up almost 7%, which is absolutely phenomenal. And you can see that over the past five days, the company's shares have actually increased over 17%. So really, really good, especially for investors that got in at around that $80 per share mark. You guys have done very well. And I know a lot of you guys that did get in are part of the Patreon, so congratulations on the gains that you have made on Alibaba. But let's dig closer into what causes shares to surge this week, including what happened today. So you can see here that Alibaba led the gains in the US listed Chinese stocks on Beijing's Vow. But I just wanna point out something funny with this article here. They're trying to advertise Pantene shampoo to a guy that looks like Mr. Clean. Okay, let's move on. You can see here that the Chinese Communist Party pledge to deliver on economic targets and support healthy growth of internet platform companies. And, and I'll be very honest with you guys, none of this is new news. They have come out with this plenty of times before and I've even covered it at the end of 2021 and in early 2022. So the CCP pledging to support internet companies is something that has been a core tenet of the CCP for a long time, however, Sometimes actions speak louder than words, and that's really what investors have been weary about. Now, the other thing that they mentioned is that they want to speed up the implementation of supportive measures to the economy, including tax cuts and fee reductions while sticking to the zero COVID policy. So effectively, they're saying that they want to have their cake and eat it too. Look, it's the zero COVID policies, in my opinion, that are impacting the economy. So the fact that you want to stick to the zero COVID policies while stimulating the economy in some other way, you're still not addressing the real issue. It's these zero COVID policies. We got to get rid of them. However, I recognize that it's not so easy in China at the moment. And so based on this, the Chinese ADRs are rallying today in response specifically to the statement about a positive collaborative relationship between the government and China's platform technology companies. And this analyst here, Jason Zhu, has said that we have seen the last of the regulatory crackdowns. Now look, I actually think in my opinion, I believe that he's wrong. Look, I'm a huge Alibaba bull. I believe in the Chinese economy. At the same time, I don't believe in the CCP not being able to do CCP things. I don't think that this is the end of the regulatory crackdowns. And in fact, I actually think it's just a par for the course when it comes to investing in China. And I'll prove my point with these couple of examples. You can see here in April of 2021, the Chinese government wanted to limit the power of Chinese technology companies. And the first area that they went after was actually an area that I support. They believed that monopoly is an enemy of a market economy economy and there's no contradiction between regulating under law and supporting development and in fact they believe that those two things complement each other and they are mutually reinforcing and I believe that they're right however notice the comment that I put at the bottom what are the rules are the rules that you're just going after monopolistic practices or the, are the rules that you're going after other things that you deem unhealthy? And can you list out what those things are so that we know the worst thing that you can do for investors is not make the market predictable. Just tell us what you're trying to do. Tell us now so that we can adjust our allocation of capital now. Otherwise, we're just going to discount everything, which is what's happened in China. People want to invest in China, but they just can't because it's too uncertain. Predictability in finance is the most important thing. So, of course, in their anti-monopolistic pursuits, they went after Alibaba and gave them a $3 billion fine. And that makes a lot of sense because from what I've read, at least, Alibaba was participating in somewhat monopolistic practices when they had the choose one from two policies where they're forcing retailers to choose Alibaba over other platforms. And so it didn't make sense. Retailers should be able to list on every platform. And so 
I understand that that's a monopolistic practice and I'm okay with Alibaba taking the fine for that. And so is Alibaba actually. But with that said, the CCP hasn't been consistent with what they go after. You can see here, the Chinese regulators called in Tencent, NetEase and other gaming companies for an interview to remind them of restrictions on game time for children. And then Beijing actually temporarily froze game approvals. So here's the thing, instead of allowing parents to decide how much game time is best for their children, the central government has decided to parent the children in China themselves. And so here's one of those situations where you have these companies that are social media companies and gaming companies. What are the rules with how much regulatory crackdown you're gonna put on these companies? This is why when Manish Pabrai jumped into Tencent, I actually didn't buy Tencent because I don't actually know what the rules are for the CCP. I understand with at least Alibaba, they're probably not gonna come after online retail. They're probably not gonna go after the cloud even though they did go after the cloud a little bit. And they're probably not gonna go after Alibaba's foray into grocery. So I think I'm relatively safe there. However, even Alibaba hasn't been safe in this because once again, I said they went after the cloud, especially with the government entities, but then they also went after Alibaba's delivery platforms as well with forcing them to charge lower fees. So it's like, who really knows what the rules are, right? And that's what makes it so difficult to invest in China in this environment. They have to once again, be very transparent with the rules, which is not what they've been doing. And, and so here's exactly what I was talking about in March. March, Metuan's shares actually significantly declined because the Chinese government asked it to cut commissions for small and medium-sized merchants in pandemic hit regions. And this is a company that has to recoup costs for developing this platform. So the fact that the investors can't even predict whether or not the Chinese government is gonna once again step in and just completely cut fees here is a problem. So would I recommend anybody invest in food delivery platforms in China? I don't think so because I don't know when the government's gonna step in once again and force these companies to reduce fees. So back to my original comment, what are the rules? Because you're making it incredibly unpredictable and I don't think just by saying you're gonna work with technology companies is enough. And this analyst is one that I believe that gets it. The market is excited by the current headlines, but to see this rally sustained, we need to move from talking the talk to walking the walk. Investors are looking for an excuse to buy China technology securities, so it's up to the Chinese policymakers to give them that reason. And this is what I always say about politicians. Do not listen to what they say watch what they do. And the CCP has not walked the walk yet. Now, with that said, I'm still a buyer of Alibaba. You can see here that my valuation of Alibaba, I believe that it's intrinsic value is somewhere in that $300 per share area. And its share price has a percentage of its intrinsic value somewhere around that 30% area. So at a hundred bucks per share, it's trading at a deep discount, I believe. And the other thing that I wanna point out, and this is something that the Patreons have access to, I don't believe that you should just be looking at the share price as a percentage of intrinsic value when valuing companies. You should be looking at other risk metrics that could potentially impact the company going forward. So with every company in this environment, I like to look at, do they have any debt? Are they inflation resistant? What is the size of their economic moat? and how is that intrinsic value expected to be recognized? And so from here, you can see that Alibaba has no debt. In fact, they're buying back shares with their excess cash, so that's good. They are, their platform is inflation resistant, which is really good because as prices go up, Alibaba's platform just takes a higher amount of each transaction because they take a fee of the transaction value. The one risk that I would point out for Alibaba is that I would say that their economic moat has declined because there's lots of emerging competition and it's something that they have mentioned on their calls as well. And then of course, how is intrinsic value expected to be realized? I love when there's two areas to realize your intrinsic value. One is growth and the second is the revaluation of the multiple. Like I always say, there's three ways to make money in the stock market. The first one is just the reverse PE yield. The second is the growth of the security. And the third is the potential revaluation of that security. So Alibaba has all three things going for it right now. Now recently I did say that I doubled down on Alibaba. In fact, I doubled down last week when the shares were around 80 bucks a share around $85 per share, somewhere around there. And you can see how I did it. I actually looked at the January 19, 2024 cash secured puts 
at $100 per share, and I was able to nab them at $30 per share. Now, I just put a question mark here. I don't know if this is still going to be available, but I think these shares continue to be volatile because the Chinese government hasn't really given us anything material to hold on to. So just like there has been good news today, I think there could be bad news tomorrow to bring these premiums back up. Now, what does this actually mean? Well, you can see here that I get really good downside at a net purchase price of $70 while simultaneously getting an annualized yield of 17.4%. So that's really good in my opinion. And I really believe it's important to focus on the downside right now because you don't know what can happen with the Chinese economy going forward as they stubbornly hold on to the zero COVID policies and as we continue to see economic fallout from their real estate crisis. So there's a couple of things going on here. So you can see here, I actually discussed this in the previous video where I talked about my double down. Here's sort of my logic behind the cash secured put sale. And I'm going to go right into the next page where I break it out. So you can see here that the exercise price is $100 per share. The premium that I'm getting is $30 per share. The free cash flow per share generation for 2022 and 2023 is expected to be approximately $12.60 a share. The company currently has around $43 per share on its balance sheet. So by the date of the strike price, the company foreseeably, if they didn't spend any of the cash and if the equity securities and other investments remained at the current value, you'd have approximately $55 per share of effectively cash and equity securities. And so effectively what you're saying is as of January of 2024, is the operating company worth only $44.64 per share? And I would argue that if they're generating free cash flow of approximately $6.30 a year, multiply that at 15 times earnings, you're looking at at least a $90 per share stock at the very minimum with no material growth. But we already know Alibaba has material growth. So the multiple that they should probably get is probably around 25 or more. That being said, even if the operating company is only worth $44.64 a share at that time, and you know the valuation adds on that excess capital that they have, so the shares are trading at $100 per share, so you get exercised at that $100 per share, you still have that $30 per share premium. So if you were to sell it at that time at $100 per share, assuming that the stock price is $100 per share, you still just made that premium, right? So effectively what I'm saying is that you have a significant amount of downside protection by focusing on downside with these long-term cash secured puts because you're not only getting your premium, but there's a significant amount of cash and excess capital on the balance sheet of this company that supports the share price. Now, none of this is advice, but I'm just explaining to you guys why I doubled down. I see this company trading significantly below even what its liquidation value is at this point. And, and when it came down to 80 bucks a share and the cash secured puts were yielding $30 per share, it was just too much to not jive into. And so that's exactly what I did. And of course, you guys know you can access all of the models and all of that research at the $5 a month tier on the Patreon. And once again, when you guys join the monthly calls, these are the types of things that we talk about and we talk about them with many, many securities. And so I really encourage you to join us and chat with us every month. And once again, like I always say, if you join and you don't like it within the first month, no problem. Message me in the app. Say, hey, Tay, this is not for me. No problem. I'll refund your money right away. No questions asked. And of course, Alibaba is not the only tech company that I've been following. Facebook and Google both recently reported results. And so you can get the Facebook results right here and right underneath it, you can get to the Google results.